Yo, what's up guys? So now we're going to be talking about vectors in R cube. And R cube basically represents a three-dimensional space. So instead of dealing with an XY plane like we dealt with in R squared, we're going to be dealing with an XYZ plane this time. It's going to be 3D. So position vectors in R cubed are represented similarly as in R squared. So we have this OP here where the zero represents the tail of the vector at the origin. However, this coordinate P is now going to have three parts. An X, Y, and Z part. So notice how we can't deal with an XY plane now because now we have this extra Z. So we're going to have to deal with an XYZ plane. And the real challenge in this section is going to be the drawing part of it. At least for me it's a challenge as I'm not too much of an artsy type, but we'll do our best. So this is how an XYZ plane looks like. And the x-axis is represented by this black line, the y-axis is represented by the blue line, and the z-axis is represented by the red line. And you sort of have to try to visualize this in a 3D way. So the way I like to think about it is the x-y plane represents a floor, and then perpendicular to that, sticking out of that floor, is the z-axis. Now the parts of the axes that I drew here only represent the positive parts. So these axes, obviously, this here represents the origin, and then these axes extend out. So the z-axis, the negative part, would be represented by the dotted line here. The negative part of y we can represent here. And then the negative part of x we would represent out here, it would stick out out there. Now, as I mentioned, you have to try to visualize this XYZ plane in a 3D way. And if you're having trouble doing that from this diagram, I drew another diagram up here with the same XYZ plane in blue, and inside it, I represented a 3D cube. So hopefully that helps your perspective and makes it easier for you to see the plane in a 3D way. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this general vector 0p equals abc and I'm gonna graph it on this xyz plane. Now a, b, and c can be any number, positive or negative, and any combination. However, for this example, we're just gonna assume that a, b, and c are positive. Now the first step I like to take is I like to label the x, y, and z intercepts with whatever point we're dealing with. So whenever you get a point like this, remember that this a here represents the x coordinate, the b represents the y coordinate, and the c represents the z coordinate. So if we start off by labeling the x intercept, the x intercept would be positive, because remember we said a, b, and c are, uh, are positive, so it's going to be in the positive part of the x axis. And let's say it's just somewhere here. Now, since this is an x intercept, we know that the x value will be a, and the y and the z value will be zero. Similarly, on the y axis, the y value is b and it's greater than zero, so it's on the positive part of the axis. And since, since it's the y intercept, the x value will be zero, the y value will be b, and the z value will be zero. And then let's label the z intercept. So the z intercept will be up here. Again, c represents the uh, z coordinate and it's positive, so it's on the positive part of the axis. And this coordinate, since it's the z intercept, the x value is zero, the y value is zero, and the z coordinate is c. Now the next step we're gonna take is we're gonna draw the two dimensional points in the x, y, the x, z, and the y, z planes. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's start with the x, y plane, the floor. So the x intercept we know is a, zero, zero, and the y-intercept is 0, b, and 0. Now, what if we combine both of these points? So, 
an x value of a would be all over all on this line and then a y value of b would be anywhere on this line. So both of them combined would meet right there. So the coordinate of this point would take an x value of a, the y value would be b, and the z value would still be zero. Because notice it's on the xy plane and the z value, the z axis, this uh, red axis has a value of zero on that plane. Now let's deal with the yz plane, or the plane represented on this diagram by the furthest side on the cube. So the y-intercept is 0b0 zero, and the z-intercept is 0c. Zero, zero, so if we combine both of these points on the yz plane, these points would meet right here. All right, and the coordinate of that would be 0, b, and c. It takes a y value of b and a z value of c, and this x value is 0. Because if you think about it, this x-axis here, whichever diagram you're looking at, is this axis that sort of sticks out at us or sticks out away from us. And this face, this yz plane, <clears throat> it has a neutral x value. It's not sticking out towards us on the x-axis and it's not sticking out away from us on the x-axis either. It just takes a neutral value of zero. So now similarly, let's uh, draw the 2D point on the xz plane. So the x-intercept is a and the z-intercept is c. So if we combine these points, that point would be right there. So this point here, the x value is a, in this case the y value is 0, and the z value is c. Alright, so on the xz plane the y value is 0, the y value is neutral, it's not sticking out towards the right or the left. Now the third step and the final one is that we're going to take any of our two-dimensional points that we found in step two and we're going to shift it on the remaining axis. So what do I mean by that exactly? So let's say that we take our xy plane point, this a, b, zero. Now we already dealt with the x and y values and the only value remaining to take care of is this z value because it has a value of zero on the xy plane. So what we have to do is we have to take this point a, b, and 0 on the x, y plane and we have to shift it up on the z axis by c units to get to this point. Now we don't necessarily have to start in the x, y plane. I personally like to start there and then either shift this point up or down depending on what coordinate you have. But you could also start in the y, z plane. So let's say we started at this two dimensional point that we have, the 0, b, c. Well we already have values for y and z of b and c. And what value is remaining? Well this x value is remaining. So we can take this point 0, b, and c and shift it on the x-axis by a units. So we would take this point and shift it towards us. Similarly, we could also take this point on the xz plane, this a, 0, and c. What coordinates are taken care of? Well, we already have a x value and a z value and we uh, we still need the y value. So we would take this point on the xz plane and shift it on the y axis by b units. All right, so you could take any two dimensional point and then shift it. Personally, I like to take the xy point and then shift it on the uh, on the z axis, whether it's up or down. So this final point that we end up at well, that ends up being our final point of A, B, and C. We took care of all of the coordinates, the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and the Z coordinate. So this is our final point. 
and we have to remember draw this vector 0p so 0 the tail of the vector starts at the origin and the head of the vector is going to end at this coordinate a b and c which we have right here so the vector would look something like this all right it's kind of going like across uh, across the cube through the cube if uh, if you want to try to visualize that in a 3d way now before finishing this video I want to make a couple of notes the first thing I want you to remember that this diagram here represents when a b and c are greater than zero however they can take any combination of positive and negatives but no matter what the combination is the steps that i outline here for you are always the same all right just follow these general steps so you always label the x y and z intercepts first then you draw the two-dimensional points on the xy plane on the yz plane and then on the xz plane and then shift one of the points on the remaining axis that you have to fill in also depending on what combination of positive and negatives that you have for the x y and z coordinates you'll have this cube shifted in different quadrants so a cube has eight corners always and one of these corners will always represent the origin depending on what combination of positive and negatives you have for the x y and z coordinates the best thing to do is just to get as much practice as you can follow these steps and uh, and you should be fine we'll be doing a lot more examples in the next few videos in a three-dimensional space so make sure you go ahead and watch those